Loan deals are becoming ever more fashionable in football. It's a cheaper option than a full transfer and unsatisfied customers can return the player after the loan spell ends. Europe's big clubs typically have a squad of 30 players plus several dozen more plying their trade all over the continent. The hope is that their market value will rise, a growing business conducted away from the headlines. Loaning reached absurd levels in the case of this man, Michael Hector. The 27-year-old Londoner is a member of the Jamaican national squad and was loaned out to over a dozen clubs in the space of nine years. Yeah, no, obviously, I've uh, been on a few loans. After signing for Reading, his first loan spell came shortly after he turned 18. Three years later, he'd already played for 10 clubs. In most cases, he was passed on after just a few months in the interests of his contractual employer. Loan deals were originally created for clubs to ensure more match experience for younger players. An example from Germany, Philipp Lahm. Still not considered ready for the Bayern senior squad, at 19 he was sent off to Stuttgart. By the time he returned two years later, Lahm was arguably the best fullback in Germany. Als ähm, in Stuttgart, nach Stuttgart verliehen wurde, natürlich äh, war es auch für ihn sehr gut, weil er da gewachsen ist, zum Mann geworden ist. Once back in Munich, Lahm rapidly became a regular, going on to win a glittering array of silverware. Similar game with Tony Kroos. Just after his 19th birthday, he was loaned out to Leverkusen, where he rose to become one of the top offensive players in the Bundesliga. When the 18-month loan spell was up, Leverkusen wanted to make the deal permanent, but Bayern kept their man and Kors went on to reach stellar heights. It's a classic loan strategy that Bayern also deployed with Serge Gnabry and David Alaba, who both spent time honing their skills at Hoffenheim. Another win-win example is Danny Carvajal, who matured to greatness at Leverkusen before returning to Real Madrid, in this case a buy-back deal. Thibaut Courtois was 19 when signed by Chelsea, who immediately loaned him out to Atletico Madrid. Three years later, he'd established himself as one of Europe's top keepers. But the aim has since become more than just developing young talents. It's now a business in its own right, and one growing from one season to the next. A look at the clubs with the most players out on loan reveals some preposterous figures. Italy dominates proceedings on this front at least, stockpiling legions of players. Atalanta Bergamo are currently top of this table, although even they have just a piffling 54 players loaned out. Compare that to Parma Calcio in 2013. In addition to their actual squad, the club had 184 players registered while playing for other clubs. That was more than the squads of Barcelona, Bayern, Juventus, Liverpool, Real Madrid and Manchester United combined. I don't think that's good for football. Says former Leverkusen star and now club executive Simon Rolfes. We try to uh, be very selective in that, uh, in, in both of that, because I'm not a friend of having 20 players on loan, uh, because the contact to the player get get lost. Leverkusen only have three players out on loan, but they're still a regular competitor on the European stage and have a similar financial setup to the likes of Atalanta. So what explains the difference? You have to uh, calculate that, that the player needs time to to adapt. And, and the, the adaptation sometimes need, needs two, three, three, four months to the style, to, to probably a different country. German clubs have been more cautious than their counterparts in the other big European leagues. A loaning is uh, something which is not the perfect thing to do. Says Lutz Pfannenstiel, until recently in charge of transfers at Fortuna Düsseldorf. If I could change it around and would just buy, then I wouldn't loan anybody. Although in his time, Dusseldorf had more loanees in their squad than anyone else in the league, urgently needed reinforcements in the relegation battle. A good share of players loaning out and loaning in is, is fair enough, but if you're having basically 30 players 
in your team and you have another 54 players out on other, play, on other teams' books, uh, then I think it's simply the business model on top of it and it shouldn't be that way. But it's a business model that has brought dividends for clubs like Chelsea. They farmed out dozens of young players from their academy, confident they'll come back with a big financial return. Michael Hector was among the recruits to the Lone Army. In 2015, his favourite team, Chelsea, bought him from Reading, only to loan him back to the club just one day later. So obviously, the next step for Chelsea was to loan him out, this time to Frankfurt. He was now valued at several million euros, but after that subsequent year in the Bundesliga, he was loaned out to yet another club, Hull City. And one season later, his travels continued. Now to Sheffield Wednesday. Each loan I go on, I come back a stronger man and, and person. So for me, it's always a learning experience going on loan. Sometimes they've not been what I expected it to be, but I've always learned from it and always come back a stronger player. But not strong enough for his actual employer. In the five years he was on Chelsea's books, he never actually played a single game for them. An extreme case of players being traded like stocks and shares. I played in England. I mean, I was on loan myself plenty of times. Uh, in England, it's pretty normal. It was always in their culture to loan players. For other clubs in, in Europe, it's, it's, it's not about... Um, sometimes I think it's not about that they have to play in their first team squad. Then it's, it's a business model also to increase revenue. Kenneth Omeruo is another of Chelsea's footballers turned financial assets. Signed from Standard Liège, aged 18, the young Nigerian was loaned out to clubs in the Netherlands, England and Turkey. In seven years, he didn't play a single game for Chelsea, who sold him to Spain's Leganes in 2019, at a profit of 5 million euros. A concept that evidently worked for one party at least. Chelsea's YouTube channel even has a special video playlist featuring its array of loaned out players. The club also have their own loan coach, former player Tori Andre Flo. His job is to visit those players at their respective clubs and track their performance. You could see it as assessing the dividends on a product. You go back at Chelsea, it's the the first team, the reserves, and there's this loan group. And if you get put in a loan group, you're just like waiting to go out, really. So the first day of pre-season, that's not a great start already. It's mad in itself, isn't it? Yeah. A loan group. Yeah. Yeah. That's unbelievable. But some players have benefited. Romelu Lukaku became a massive asset on the pitch while on loan to West Brom and Everton. He eventually landed a high-profile transfer to Manchester United, a profitable outcome for both club and player. Kevin De Bruyne was also a member of Chelsea's Lone Army. While the Blues made a pretty penny in transfer fees, the Belgian also saw a boost to his own career. Mo Salah was considered a failure at Chelsea, but after showing his true worth while on loan, managed to hit the big time after all. But with the loan business getting out of hand, FIFA has now intervened to curb player hoarding. As of 2021, clubs will be able to loan out a maximum of eight players aged 22 or over. And a year after that, only six. FIFA claims that this is an important step towards making transfers more moral. But will that do the trick? Some of the business model will not work uh, like, like now. Uh, for sure, you have to, you have to uh, decrease the number of, of the loan agreements, but... but... As you can see, also nowadays, it's a lot of clubs have another club with the same owner. So there will be different options to, to, um, to handle this situation or this, the restrictions of the fever. Simon Rolfers is referring to so-called farm clubs like those from the Red Bull franchise. Players are horse traded between New York, Leipzig and Salzburg, completely in accordance with the rules. Then there's the Manchester City model. They have a deal to send non-squad players to gather match experience at Spanish club Girona. City are part owners of Girona, in partnership with a football agent by the name of Per Guardiola, brother of City coach Pep. So there will probably always be players like Michael Hector. 
destined to keep on turning out for a different team every season while never featuring for the club they signed for. In the case of Hector, the team of their dreams. Obviously growing up I supported uh, Chelsea growing up, going to the games and stuff like that and yeah, it's, for me it's... And I've not played games for the, for the first team but yeah, just being a part of the club has been special for me. You never know what can happen in the summer. In January 2020, Hector eventually did find a new footballing home, just a couple of kilometres away at Fulham. The fellow West London side paid 5 million euros to prize Hector away from Chelsea's lone army. He's now his own boss, as well as that of Fulham's back line. And not just for a few months this time. After countless loan spells, he finally has a permanent employer, for now at least.